What happened on this stretch of road has police and neighbors puzzled. It's spooky. You know, it's it is. It's scary, especially in a quiet neighborhood like this. You just don't hear about things like this in the neighborhood. You don't. According to state police, the 82 year old man who lives at the home went to one of his neighbors for help. The call came in as a possible assault and house fire. When crews arrived, they went into the home and found a woman sitting in a chair in the bedroom with blunt trauma to her head. The victim has been identified as 82 year old Magda Scherer. It upsets me. I mean, we're talking about two elderly people. Why would somebody do this? Police say the suspect, Sharer's husband, Thomas, was later arrested at the scene and brought to the hospital after complaining of chest pains. We spoke to one man who lives right next door to the couple. I talked to them like, you know, they'd come over, see how we're doing and everything else. And walking down the road, they'd wave and everything. The trucks at Nagel Farm Service in Y Mills in Queen Anne's County are filling up with grain. The quality has been excellent. Chad Nagel is the manager of the farm service. He says all the dry weather we've had in recent months was actually ideal for the wheat while it was at its flowering stage. There's a certain window of time um, when the crop is growing where you need and want dry weather. But Nagel says because of all the wet weather we had last fall, some farmers couldn't plant their grains. That's adding up to less wheat this year. Right now, wheat is going for about $4 a bushel, which may not prove lucrative for some farmers. $4 would have been great profits for the farmer in the past. That's more of a break-even um, price just because all the costs have escalated. As for who decides the going rate of wheat, that takes place in the Windy City. In Chicago, um, there's people that are buying and selling wheat, corn, and beans, and that's where uh, the price discovery takes place. So it changes daily based on uh, world factors, uh, based on freight, based on demand, supply. Some waterfront property in Cambridge seems to be getting closer and closer to the water. Heavy rains and wind are causing streets and yards to flood, and there's another culprit. Rain is not the only problem for these neighborhoods. Residents say that during storms, the high tide will actually come right up and over river walls like this one and flood the streets. Robert Roten has seen his yard underwater one too many times. You can see the hole there where the storm, uh, the rainwater just goes overboard. But if you have a high tide, and a rain at the same time, then it isn't going anywhere. It's going to flood the whole street. So, the whole so, so my front yard is waterfront. Right. <laughs> so Very that's the way that goes. The flooding gets so bad that manhole covers come loose and the mixture of water and sewage spills out onto the street and into yards. You go down Water Street and then you see the water coming right up out of the manhole. Right the so it's overwhelmed. George Hyde is the director of public works for the city of Cambridge. He says the area prone to flooding currently uses a combined storm drainage and sewer line system, which overflows when there is too much water. Hyde says the city is fixing the problem by separating both systems to make them more efficient. As for Roten, he doesn't blame all the flooding on the water. It's inconvenient, but I'm the one that chose to build the house here and I knew the river was here. Reporting from the Midshore, Brian Spiros, WBOC News, Cambridge. The planes have arrived and they're getting ready for tomorrow. Airport day will be an open house of sorts. More than 30 vintage warplanes from all over the country will be on display. Some will be parked, others will perform in the sky. Everyone that comes down to the airport tomorrow will get a chance to get up close and personal with all the planes and even talk to the pilots. The Red Star Pilots Association will be doing formation flying from up above. A lot of us are former military guys and uh, flu fighters and stuff like that. And we teach the guys that don't have that experience uh, how to fly formation. There will also be the first ever chicken drop. Every airplane is going to come down the runway and we have a target down there on the end of the runway in front of the terminal where the crowd can watch and guys are going to throw a rubber chicken out of their airplane and try and hit the target. Plenty of food will be on hand for people to enjoy. Some of the money raised from those sales will help benefit hospice. Reporting from the Midshore, Brian Spiros, WBOC News, Easton.